Hi, for this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to find the linear regression equation and the correlation coefficient in class calc. The linear regression equation is also known as the line of best fit. And basically what happens is the line of best fit minimizes the distance each of the points is from the line of best fit. So it's finding the best line to fit the data, taking into account all of the data points. Doing this by hand is a very long process and you can make a lot of mistakes. So it's a lot better to use technology to help you find your line of best fit. So if you're in an algebra course, then you're probably going to see y equals mx plus b. If you are in some statistics textbooks, the one I currently teach from actually uses this one, but they just put a hat over the y um, to let you know that it's a prediction instead of the actual value of y. So you may see this equation, y hat equals mx plus b, or y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope, and B represents the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. The slope is telling you the steepness of the equation and whether it will go up or down. If it's a positive slope, it will go up from left to right. If it's a negative slope, it will go down from left to right. Um, in most statistics textbooks, they will use the equation y hat equals a plus bx, and a lot of times they will actually name the variables, so instead of doing y hat, they would write out systolic blood pressure with a hat over it to tell that it's a prediction. And then for the other variable x, they would write in age. That way you have your variables named and you know what those variables represent in context. For this one, a would be the y-intercept and b would be the slope. And for this one, it does make it easier if you're making predictions without typing the equation in. After we've come up with the equation, um, we are going to try to make predictions for some systolic blood pressure using the line of best fit. And I'm gonna use class calc to help with this one. I do have videos that show you how to do this in the TI-84, TI which is the same as the TI-83, um, the TI Inspire and Excel. So there are a lot of different ways of getting to this. You can also use Desmos. Um, there's a lot of options for finding the line of best fit, but for this video, I am going to use class calc. In class calc, I have already typed in all of the values into a table, but I will show you how to do that. So if I needed to type a new table, I would just go to table and I would place that in there. If you use a homework platform like Pearson's MyLab, uh, you can copy the data directly from the homework problems. You just need to make sure that you copy it as a comma delimited file in order to see it. Okay, so like I said, we already have the data in and all we have to do is go and find the linear regression. So to find that, if this menu is not up for you, you would just do the double arrows and you would go to stat and then you would go into advanced and we can see that linear regression is the very first one. When I hit this, it will bring up that I need to know which column my data is in. So if you notice, it says column one, column two. So I would just hit X1 for the first column and Y1 for the second column. And I didn't have to do anything to get that one as a subscript. It automatically places it in there when I type in the X followed by the one. So this is the equation. If you want to see the data, and this is something that I should have talked about before, is that I could have clicked on this to be able to see the data points over here on the graph. And then notice that they did put the line of best fit in there. And this line does fit the data very well. Okay. Um, so when you go to write this down, it just depends on which method your textbook is talking about. This puts it in the traditional y equals mx plus b format with the hat on it. The r is your correlation coefficient. Uh, your r squared is the variance. So 0.9363, that means that 93.64% of the variability is explained by this equation but R is what we're looking for for the correlation coefficient. Remember that with a correlation coefficient, it has to be between negative one and positive one. The closer it is to either one or negative one, the stronger the correlation. For this one, since the correlation is 0.9676, that's very close to one. 
which means that this is a very strong e prediction equation. Anything from about 0.8 to 0.1 would be strong, or to 0.99 would be strong. If it's exactly one, that means that all of the points fall on the line, and 100% of your data points fall on that line. If it's between 0.6 to 0.79, then it's moderately, it's a moderate strength equation. If it's between 0.4 to 0.59, it's weak. And anything below 0.4, really, you would not want to use that prediction equation for anything. So the correlation does tell you how well this could be used as a prediction equation. And another thing that you have to keep in mind is you don't want to extrapolate when you are making predictions. You only want to make predictions for values that fall within the range of the known data. Okay, so we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, when you go to write this down, just be very careful about what you round it to. Um, most of the time, we either round to two or three decimal places. Just read your homework platforms very carefully because I know that in the one that I use for my students right now, that for the slope and the y-intercept, that they do have you round it to two different things. So make sure that you read very carefully. Remember the slope is the value in front of the x and the y-intercept is the one that goes by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down. My prediction equation is y hat equals 1.629 x plus 80.241. So if your textbook requires you to write it that way, that's how you would write it. The alternative is you could write it as y hat equals 80.241 plus 1.629x. So either one of them are acceptable. The second one does make it a little bit easier if you're having to make predictions and you don't use technology to help you make predictions. Um, you could go through and change the values here. Uh, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. So if you're, sh if you're just changing the last value, it does make it a little bit faster to do. As far as the predictions go, what you want to do is you want to look at the range of your original x values. So it's really important that you look only at the x values. The y values do not matter. And you want to find your lowest value and your highest value. So my lowest value is 16. So that's my minimum. And my highest value is 70. That's my maximum. So I only want to make predictions from for values that fall between 16 to 70, okay? Um, if it falls outside of that, then it's not going to be a meaningful prediction. So if we look at these values down here, we can see that 53 falls between 16 to 70, 25 falls between 16 to 70. This one is outside of the range of 16 to 70. So this would be a not meaningful prediction. So you would not want to make a prediction for this value. Um, it's not meaningful because you're extrapolating and 85 is pretty far outside of 70. So we're not going to make a prediction for that one. So I'm only going to make a prediction for the 53 and 25. You as the human have to know when it's acceptable and when it's not, because if I plugged 85 into the calculator, the calculator is going to give me a result for that. Um, but I need to know when it's not meaningful. So basically what we're going to do is to find these using either equation. I'm just going to use the first one. Um, I'm going to make a prediction for 53. So technically what I'm doing is 1.629 times 53 plus 80.241. And for the second one, we would do the same thing, but we would use 25 instead. So I would just do 1.629. The thing that's changing is the X, so I would change that to 25 plus 80.241. Okay, and using class calc, instead of um, going through and typing them in individually, 
what I can do is I can add onto this. So let's say that I want to add another column onto that. So I'm just going to call it A. It doesn't matter what I call it. I could just call it X. I could call it whatever I want to. And I know that I want to make predictions for 53 and I want to make predictions for 25. So what I can come down here and do is because I use the variable A, I can just type in the 1.629 times A plus 80.241. And right now it gives me a two item list. And so I can click on this and I can see that my first predicted value would be approximately 166.578 and the second one would be approximately 120.966. So we would probably round those to the nearest whole number since all of the systolic blood pressures um, are rounded to the nearest whole number. Notice that if I did go back up here and I plugged in that 85, because like I said, I could plug it in. Notice now it gives me a three item list and I can see that it returns all three values. This one again is not meaningful because we're extrapolating. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you look for values that are not meaningful because your technology will go ahead and give you an answer for it, um, but it saves you time to use this, um, the column, to be able to find all three answers at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and write these answers down and then we will be finished with these videos. So when the age is 53, we could expect the systolic blood pressure to be approximately 167 um, because it was 166.578, but we just rounded it to approximately 167. And for this one, it would be approximately 121. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.